this is one of the greater moments for me, you know, like this is a, uh, I don't even know where to begin with this. This is me and Kevin Parker. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, um, Shit. I, the, <laughs> from the day I heard Kevin's music, I knew me and him could do something. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it from the minute I heard it. I was like, I was like, oh man. I was like, oh. Personally, I was like, man, I would have been in his band. Oh, uh, what's up, man? What's happening? How are you, bro? <laughs> I'm all right. I've been drinking a lot of water, Good. and uh, I've been punching. Good. And uh, you look yeah. well, man. I said that off the record. I want to let people know on the record. Um, you know, you look like you're in your health. I've been working on it, man. I've been working on it, and uh, I know it's different. You know, it's like it's it's a constant battle every day. You know. Yeah. But I I'm with it. You know what I mean? It's interesting when we find health out of necessity. And and I think, you know, when we're, when we're young, we're told it's a choice and you should do it and da-da-da-da. And then you get to a point in your life, and it, the same thing happened to me for different reasons. You know, I had to get Got healthy. It. I had to. And I actually loved that that because it, it put it in a different framework. I don't begrudge it now. Like, I know that it serves me. Yeah. Like, I, um, I mean, if I'm uh, being totally candid with you about it, it's kind of like, you know, again, you know, the terms and circumstances under which we've met in different prior situations like this you know it's like that was a really life-changing moment for me you know and I think that uh I, I you know they would I would always get subtle hints and things here and there from close friends or girlfriends at different times I was and I when I look back a lot of, and even when we talk about moments sometimes you know there would be moments where it's like I was kind of like John Belushi man <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Well, because you're charming with it, right? So people aren't, aren't quite sure. You can't where tell the, them where the, <laughs> that's the thing. And people and people also, you know, when you're fun with it, yeah. When, when it exu- when it exudes, um, you know, a, a, a positive fun energy, people who love you don't know whether to pause. Yeah. Or yeah. And, or 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 get in, in between that experience, or whether it's like, oh. It's all fun and games. It's all cool. He's cool. Yeah, no, it was It was like I, at different times I would have different descriptions of things. Like one girlfriend at one point was literally like she she compared it to like Jekyll and Hyde. Huh. She would like I couldn't tell who I was talking to. Yeah, yeah. And it was like I know the real person, so I know that that's not really what's coming out of you. But yeah. whatever's coming out of you when you get here, yeah, yeah. either you're not addressing it and it's that stark of a difference. It was some. It was literally oh, like it was kind of like a almost like a like culminating to like like a pus bump. You know, and it was like, uh, it, I don't know. It's like, uh, uh, I think that, you know, moment defining a definite change in my life. It was kind of like, uh, I, you know, I kind of had to tether myself back into reality in a different way. Well, you, you know? yeah, well, you have to ask yourself, am I ready for reality? Yeah. Because because what, what we're doing in those moments is we're trying to separate ourselves yeah. from reality, right? Oh yeah, and it's and it's it's like what a hell of a reality to come back into. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's and that's why they call it the work. Right? <laughs> it's not like you just wake up one day and be like, I don't need that anymore and wow, the birds are chirping. It's like holy <laughs> shit. I'm like, I still... Look at this trail of destruction. Yeah. <laughs> oh like... yeah. And like every now and again, sometimes you get cussed out and you go, "Man, I really do understand why I drank the way <laughs> yes. I'm like, if I can't process it sober, I'm like, good lord, drunk. I'm probably sure that definitely put a band aid on whatever that was. <laughs> but it's, it's funny that you talk about being cussed out though, and what it, and how it and how it you know that that idea of having your mood or identity um, affected to such a degree by someone else's oh. feelings or perspective. Oh, it's it's you know it's it's a again every version of it is a constant like. It's like always constantly adjusting or trying to understand more because there's a part where I think for many years I would like, like you were saying, I would mask it. I wouldn't, you know, I'm like, I wouldn't be able to process regardless most of the time. Yeah. But alcohol was like a big yes. You know, it was like, yeah. 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 You I'm know? old enough to drink. People are offering it oh, to me. Even when I was fix. Yeah. Even when I was younger, it was like it yeah. started young. Yeah. But there's a part where it became like uh, 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 what I couldn't process. I would just like it would almost like create a nice good set of blinders for me, and the in between was just enough of a crack to be able to function, you know. Yeah, I do. It's almost like uh, everything from cause and effect to like you know things that you can't repair, things you can't you know like things you just have to genuinely 
rebuild and fix and work on. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a lack of control in moments when you desperately, desperately oh, want yeah. it. It's the it's the great illusion unraveling before your very oh, eyes. Yeah. I know that you are a very restless, creative human. You're always got to put your creativity somewhere. Yeah, and 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 that's another thing as well. Like when you don't have an outlet for that, or perhaps you're on the road and doing things that aren't the most creative ex expression. It's more of a recreation of the creative mm. expression. Um, I wonder sort of how that affects your balance and and how you find a balance between satisfying that hunger, mm -hmm. but also realizing that life is life and creativity Ooh. is a part of that. You know, I've kind of erred on the side of there's a part where because there's no there's no rhyme and reason, the, the place where it exists with you is bigger than any part of sensibility that you can put to it depending on where you're at when it shows up. <laughs> so there's this part where it's like uh beautiful. I I I um you have to like be okay if there's nothing there. Yeah. You know? A good example is a uh, um I guess like even my process for songwriting. You know, it's like uh it's like uh like everything else is there's an art to it. There's a tool. It's a tool. You know, it's a it's something that you're always constantly chipping away at mm. or something of that nature. But it started showing up different for me after, mm. you know, it's like, okay, that's not the first thing I want to do. And a lot of the time, like you're saying, life takes precedent. Sometimes you got to just be able to live life and, like, experience what it is. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it lends itself to something completely different well, when it shows it. up. Otherwise you're forcing there's it. There's the practice of, there's always the want to keep sharpening and practicing, which is always fine but it doesn't mean it's always meant to lend itself to something you know it's like it's i think there's a part of it where i had to learn a different functionality for it for myself i'm a person that's always felt more comfortable writing by myself well you strike me as quite an introverted person i hope that's yeah. not an off the mark observation and and I, the reason that, the reason i feel that way is because in the times we've met and and hung out or spoken on the phone or whatever we have a great banter it's very natural. Yeah. But then there's been times when I've been like, hey, I'm at the same place. You got five minutes to say what's up? And you're like, yeah. And I realize that there's a difference. But, and, and I love it because I realize that what you're saying is like, when we have our time together, and I feel like this is probably how you look at life, I'm engaged. Yeah. But I don't live for that. Like, there are human beings that live for that. I get freaked out, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, regardless of what everybody sees, sometimes there's a part where I'm genuinely like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most of the time. Yeah. Anytime somebody like you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that's not an invitation. <laughs> Genuinely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like I wasn't doing anything, man. What brings you here today, my man? You know, I we would we would talk for lots of different reasons, and we've spoken off the record without any music or anything to talk about. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it open ended and ask you, why are we here today? And and where is this? Like, what what have we got in our hands here, man? Oh man. I, I, for me personally, I would like to, this is one of the greater moments for me, you know, like this is, uh, I don't even know where to begin with this. This is me and Kevin Parker, Yeah. you know, and, uh, I, um, Shit. I, the, <laughs> from the day I heard Kevin's music, I knew me and him could do something. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it from the minute I heard it. I was like, I was like, oh man. I was like, oh, personally, I was like. Man, I would have been in his band. Yeah, or I'm like, or yeah. I'm like, man, I like, you know, all of that, and like, that's a that's one part of it. The part of it where, um, there's a there's a there's a moment for me that I even had to talk to him when we started making this song, and uh, you know, like, there's that part where you know where you the, the the ways you come about collaborating and working on music. Sometimes, sometimes people at the label try to set it, it up. It can be kind know. of gross. Yeah, and I, I remember, you know, like, you know, like something like saying, I'm a fan of your music. Mm. It's so kind of like, it almost like feels like tongue in cheek. It's mm. almost like you can, mm. you say that just to like, you know, you know. Nice to meet you. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's like a weird way to fluff, you know, like you're kind of fluffing being weird. Yeah. But there's a part for it where I'm like, genuinely, for me, I own all your albums. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I remember... A very specific thing for me, and we we both we were sitting there at, while we started working on it, and I was like, I had to make sure I, I had to because you know there's a part where it's all washed over in alcohol psychologically yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah. There's a part where I was like, when did Apocalypse come out? And I was like, when did Apocalypse Dreams come out? And I was like, just make sure we see which order this is in because there's a part where I was like, you know, there's a part that this could have inspired that. Yeah. And there's a part where we both were just in the same mind frame psychologically in the feelings of certain things. I think. And I I expressed 
to Kevin how Apocalypse Dreams got me through one of the hardest moments in my life. Mm. There's only a couple songs like that, you know? And I mean, I know you remember, like, I remember Austin Peralta. Mm. And it was like, that helped me cope. That was one of the helps. That was one of, like, a genuine spiritual, like, moment for me. Mm. And, and I told him, and I was like, every the, 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 the minute you said everything is changing, mm. I was like, it just made me feel okay. <laughs> and I think, at, at, and I was like, I was like, Kevin, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. So what you're hearing I, with this is everything from that. That's what this feels like for me. Like I can distinctly remember myself in the car crying and screaming the lyrics to that song. And I was, I was just as kind of one of those things where I've, I'm like, maybe if I ever meet him one day, yeah, you know, yeah, and here we are. So what was it like when um, you and Kevin got 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 together and started forming what what what's become this song, No More Lies? Because it's so beautifully equal parts both. Of yeah, you. it's like you are doing that thing you do. Here I am projecting back on you, but <laughs> you'll appreciate this. It's a, it's it's a nice projection. Uh, you know, you are utilizing your ability to ride a scale like a wave, like a beautiful like a beautiful set yeah. on a surfboard, right? Like, Thank you. It's it's like you, you <laughs> ride the wave better than almost anyone I listen to. Um, you make skill feel soulful and simple. And that's that's, a ah! really, that's that, which I love. And then you got Kevin who does the same thing in his own way. You know, you underplay your brilliance <laughs> at the highest level. And so it's like when you're coming in together, how was that chemistry? How was that? How was that whole thing? I had to like make sure I wasn't coming in too hot because I was like. <laughs> So excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like box every day. I'm like way to the ADDs in full swing. I'm yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also because you're coming in with this thing of like, you kind of changed my life. And I just yeah, want to like, tell you before we even get started. Like, I didn't know yeah, if I should just immediately get naked and like sacrifice myself. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Kevin, I was like, hey, you like me? <laughs> we genuinely warmed up to each other. And it's, the, it's a couple of moments. I think the minute he played the idea that he had started working on. Yeah. I had pulled the bass out. I was like, man, please, let me, let me, I can, I was immediately like engaged. Yeah. And it was kind of like this thing where it was like, um, he was like, oh, okay. I, he always, and it was funny, his, his demeanor is so funny sometimes, you yeah. know, cause he was just like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> no, he is. He, I kid you not, it reminds me of my daughter. Like she, like any, my daughter can hear the wildest news. Like, hey, you know, the part of California is crashing into the ocean. Her response to everything is just, oh. <laughs> Like, would not denoting one way or the other. It's just literally like, oh. Yeah. And I was like. There's no internal meter. <laughs> yeah, you like, can't see what the meat is doing, right? I was like, was that good? Was it bad? Help me help me understand. I know exactly what you're talking about. Because the amount of times I've tried to explain to that guy what his music means to me. And it's like, you get the same thing. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Cool. You're running traffic after talking to Kevin. No, um. Yeah. But it was one of those things where. And then, uh, I, I, you know, we, I kind of wanted to sit with it for a bit. Because. I think sometimes, and this is one of those moments for me even where it was like the the contents of the heart or wherever, you know, it's like it kind of came up like vomit. And I remember I I started recording lyrical stuff to it. And he was like, at, it was funny because there's a part of it where it's like, I think sometimes my lyrics can be a bit like off-putting because it's a bit of humor sometimes maybe or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's you why know? we love you. Like, I feel weird, go to bed, brush your teeth, go, you know, yeah. go to sleep. <laughs> Beat your like, meat. <laughs> exactly. And so you, everyone's just like a focused in on the kind of like the, the, the jokiness of it. But but that, that's a sad fucking song. Uh, it's, it's like, that's, a, that's basically depression on a stick. Yeah, it's like, I do not feel like right right now. This yeah. is a little, uh, guys, it's getting darker. Yeah. No, but um, no, it's, so I, I sat with it for a bit and then I kind of, you know, came up with a bit of an idea. And I remember Kevin was just kind of like, again, oh. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. help me. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, yeah. am I saying too much? Is this not the right type of content that I should be talking about? Like, yeah. what, were we, what were we dreaming about here? Help me, help me. You know, but it was like, I think that he immediately, from what I could see, yeah. it kind of sparked his interest to want to delve into it more. You know, and it was one of those things where it just became like a, and it, it became like a game of ping pong for us. Mm. Oh, it was like, oh, oh. And we're we're talking about life, we're sharing stuff, you know, but we're talking about it. And there's I think we were just there was moments that we captured with it within this song. And it was funny because I was I don't know, I was like I think that I get a joy out of like seeing somebody laugh, you know? I do. You know what I mean? And so it's like there's a part for me where I'm just like when we hit that place where it was just like and it's like there there's the here comes the Beavis laugh. It's like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah. like I'm like there. there Connection it. formed. 
Yeah, because know? it is deep. So you clearly surprised him. What was the thing that he did that surprised you? What was the moment when you went, even internally, ah? Uh. I think that, I just feel like, I, I, personally, to be honest with you, the minute he pressed the space bar, it was like, I, it was immediately being met with everything that you would think it was for me. Mm. It was like, it was just like, I was like, sir, we can stop right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> like, I'm ready. And like, it hits you immediately. Yeah. I just love that you're you're unafraid to write a song like No More Lies. To your point, it was a vomit. You didn't sit there coming in that studio that day saying, I've got something to say. It's not like it was a fucking script you had in the back of your mind. <laughs> And then, but that's when you have to make the the ultimate decision, and you have to decide to be brave enough to let it go. Funny thing about change, man, as I keep saying, is you're always one step behind it. And oh, I think, yeah. I just don't, I just think that's that's something that we've had to acknowledge. And unfortunately, it's often the most um, uprooting and difficult circumstances that allow us to come to oh, terms with that. Oh man, you you hope that experience isn't always the best teacher, but it it, it is again. Like again, if I was to go back to where we know, you know, the places that we we've been, yeah, it's like. I, yeah, you're you're bound to learn. If you don't, you're gonna do the same thing. You know, I was forced to look at myself after when my again a few of my closest friends, you know, passed away in such volatile manners. I was forced to look at myself. There's a couple people to tell me about myself too. <laughs> like yeah. now that you you know, it's like oh now you're gonna pay now attention. You're open. Now let's have that conversation. Yeah, and it was like it's like a ton of bricks. Like I I always have this thing to myself sometimes like I was saying where I go oh I can see why I drank yeah but there's a part where it's just kind of like I remember I can remember the day that it felt like a sickness I felt it more of a sickness it was like I completely lost the whole entire want like it was just kind of like it it was like the sight of it's like it but, but it was personal it wasn't like where everybody like keep it away from me it wasn't yeah. that it was kind of like it was like mocking me it was like wow I remember looking at and I remember it was one, I forget, I think it was a bottle of Glen Meringue. And I was looking at it and I was like, wow. I was like, wow. Who is drinking who? I was like, I'm never, the way I, I was like, this is it. This is it. I was like, this is literally the moment. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, I'll never God, again. We fall ourselves through a f few of those before we reach the one that truly resonates. Yes. Yeah. That's what Erica said to me too. Erica, Erica told me, she said, you'll stop when you're tired. Erica Badu? Yeah. Yeah. She said that to me, and it was kind of like, you know, it's always like, you know, you know, yeah. she's country, so there's a part where it's just like, okay. But then and she said it to me, and I remember uh, when I stopped, that was the first thing that came to mind. She was like, yeah, well, you'll stop when you're actually tired. And it was like that moment I could acknowledge and admit I was tired. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm going to do the same thing you again. You surrendered. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm about to do the same thing again. If, and I was like, I realized, like, I was probably next. Yeah. Yeah. And it just kind of, it, it sat with me in such a manner that was just kind of like, it became a driving force. Um, Yeah, it's a lot. I know. It's, 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 it's you know, it's, it, but that's where that came from. So glad you're here. As it was, it was a lot to see front row. Mac was, it was like, a, I don't know. It was like my emotions went concave, you know? And I think that it, it it's, it was a very interesting crossroads because as that happened, things were even amping up in my life where it was like, it was like I, it was like I couldn't walk down the street without somebody saying something to me. It like it scarred me like irreparably. Like like it was genuinely like whoa. That is a clash of experiences. Yeah, I walk right into there. a building, people cut the music down. I didn't even. It just somebody walks up to you and it's just like hey hey hey. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. and it, it would be like that for a, a couple years. What a shadow following you around. That's just. It was wild, and it was something to have to, like, and then also sobering up at the same time. Yeah, so you're hyper lit. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was like loud noises, like somebody just shooting a gun <laughs> next to your ear, like, and, like, flashing a strobe light, like, all the time, all the time. You know, and anytime friends would come around, they would be like, you know, what's going on? And I just kind of, like, it, it was kind of in a daze. And then here we go with the, you know, you know uh, uh, somebody that would be interested in me. They would start to see little things. They would see stuff. They'd be like, you're not processing this. Mm. Like, you're not, you, like, you're just not, it's like, whatever you've done to start, it's like, but it, you're not processing it. So, like, I'm, I, I had to, like, 
work on being able to communicate, all of this stuff showed up at the same time. It was like a ground zero for me, for real. And I don't know, it's like, uh, you know, anytime I, there's like a giant mural of him, you know, it's right off of a uh, Highland. I roll by it and I salute it. Just to, like you were just saying with, you know, your friend where it's just like, I wouldn't be doing him justice I wouldn't be doing any of my, you know what I mean? I would, it wouldn't serve me to do the same thing and go the same way. It wouldn't serve anything that was built, you know, like anything that was created with this. It's like this, it's being able to acknowledge it and being able to look at it and go like, okay, that's, be accountable for what that is. What am I going to do with my time? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to figure out in this never ending sort of, well, it will end one day because I'll stop breathing. But like, uh, it, it, while I'm here, it will never end. This this search for like um, through lines, not in an analytical way, but just because I'm curious. The, the thing that I can apply, as, as far as I know today, to the things that become my core memories, the things I'm invested, I'm married to, yeah. is that I there's a there's an unapologetic authenticity to the creative process for you and for the people I love. Hey, I don't feel like you make art for any other reason but that it serves a purpose for you for good and for t- and for tough does that make sense well I, it, it's it's a uh, i appreciate that it's like uh i feel like it's always a double-edged sword you know it's like it's for you and also not for you that's how i've always felt about it so like how do you okay so when do you make the disconnection because you're not it surely can't be not for you when you're in the middle of making it oh well it, it's going to come out of you you know, it's gonna come out of you. It's like I, I don't know. I think there's a I think there's a part of it where it's like you have to lend yourself to it. <laughs> you know, little you can... <laughs> just just these these perfectly constructed sentences. You have to lend yourself. To. I'm just collecting them, man. You have to lend yourself to it. You don't own it. Yeah, it's like you, you know. There's you know. I was I was uh, I was actually writing with JD and Domi last night. You know, amazing. Where, we're sitting here, you know, it's like even the part where we're just like, you know, putting three of us in a room is like a bad episode, like a Nickelodeon episode. Like a, of Jazz Masters. Well, it's just like, you know, it's like, you know. You, it's Put a, three of the most precociously talented musicians in one room and see what happens, kids. Yeah, but it, we were, you know, so it's us and uh, 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 Greg Kirst and, and, and. Oh, my fucking and, God. You got, you got always on in the room as well i call him always on because the shit is always on greg is a beast man he's a beast and uh, but we're sitting here and it's just like you know emotionally it's like watching literally like an episode of a uh, of ren and stimpy with uh too much uh, was it french toast man and yeah. the horse and all yeah. it's just like that we're going cr- you know? <laughs> powdered toast man oh yeah powdered toast man yeah that powder to- you're just like flying in the window backwards you just yeah you know and but there's a part where when it Comes to the moment of what it actually <laughs> is, him. yeah. And the, it was one of those moments because we're it's all we're, you're joking and going turbo and going crazy. And what comes out of what we were creating, it was like whoa, whoa, you know. It's like it's so many things it could be, but then when it when it becomes, it was becoming this thing. It was be starting to take shape and form. It was like it was a lot to. It was like whoa, that was it's a lot. It was like whoa, that was a lot. That's gotta know? be the most present you can ever be in your life. Oh I think. man, right. Oh yeah, like and even when it comes to the content of what you decide to sing about and stuff like that, it's kind of like can't be afraid of the, you know, what, you know, like exploring it and like letting it become something. Mm. Last time I saw you play live, you were one of the few artists who actually were brave enough to step out on a stage in front of a bunch of cars, like a Disney film, and uh, <laughs> and 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 do, and do and do a show in the from from the confines of our cars. Uh, it, it really was like a drive-through experience. It was nuts. Um, That's crazy. We loved it, but I never really got to ask you how you felt about it. it was just the weirdest thing ever. Oh, it was it was awesome. In one respect, I felt like I was on the set of California Love with Tupac and. And I, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was like, "Oh, this is where we're at now." But without like, the Mad Max, yeah, without like the modern it's, Mad it's Max, like real posh Mad Max. Yeah, you posh know? It's, Mad like, Max. <laughs> it's like, ooh, <laughs> you know, Mad Max. A company retreat for the dystopian company. Yeah, it was just yeah. like, all right, guys, you know, anybody want to have a roller derby? You want to start crashing? <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, but it was, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, again, I, any. Uh, 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 Things that, again, like we were talking about core memories and stuff earlier, I'll, I'll never forget Kamasi saying to me, like, you know, no matter how you feel about how well or how, you know, you didn't do or whatever it is when you're playing, it's like any day you get the chance to play and you get to do that, it's a great day. It's a great moment. You got a chance to play, 
You know, that was like a real thing Kamasi instilled in me when we were younger as teenagers. It's like, shoot, man. Nah, and it, like, Kamasi, it's like I, anytime I would feel some kind of way about something, Kamasi would be like, ah, man, it was killing. You know, I'd be like, but I didn't, I couldn't, my, my pedal blew up and it was like one of the strings popped and I, I don't know half of the scales and like, nah, man, it was killing. And, I, and it took a while to set in and realize like, yeah, no, any time you get to play like that, it's a joy. I think about that that collective of friends that have all individually gone on to achieve things, and yet we're still obsessed with the collective. Hey, man. You know, we're obsessed with the unit as it exists, even though technically it doesn't really exist. Yeah, so like it's you like you move a, as one. Yeah, you know. But you cross paths and you do what you got to oh, yeah. do and everything else. Looking back on that time now and thinking about the way everyone's kind of uh, identity presented themselves, you make Kamasi sound like he kind of had the wisdom even at a young age. Oh, yeah. Kamasi, I always say this, Kamasi's been 50 since he was like 17. (laughs) (laughs) It's just first he was wearing a suit. uh, He's been wearing a suit the whole time. Yeah. He's just like, Kamasi is Kamasi, (laughs) you know. But, yeah, no, I, I would say that he's always been like that. Yeah. I dare say he's always been like that. You know, he's, you know, I think I've said a, a, a couple different points. He literally could have been a physicist. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But there's a part of it where it's, it's just, I grew up with this sage of a friend, you know? What What is one of those kind of core feelings or memories you have if, if you transport back to that, if you look through the annual of life and you and you sort of recognize and remember that, that period in time when you were active together and life hadn't gotten and taken you all into disparate different yeah. places. Yeah. What 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 do you think about when that comes to mind? I think about like uh, we were all we would always be together. We would go to the movies. We when Amoeba f- first popped up, we were at Amoeba, you know, like spending hundreds, spending the money from the gigs on CDs. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, sitting in the car eating burritos, listening to Ravel, you know, like going, hmm, huh. you know, like same thing with Brandon Coleman. Brandon Coleman. You know, like, uh, 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 I remember Brandon Coleman gave me his car. You know, yeah, like, he passed his car down to me. He was like, because he knew, he was like, man. You, you need to be able to get to shows, yeah. dude. And Brandon, yeah. like, you know, like, discovering Herbie, uh, uh, practicing at Cameron's dad's house, dad and mom's house, and practicing at Kamasi's dad's house, you know. we it, it, it was like, I didn't realize how specific it was that we grew up until around now in the 30s. Where you're like, holy crap. You know, it's like it's hard to put two thoughts together. There's so many funny moments where it was just like, uh, I remember one time we went to the movies. It was me, Ronald Cameron, Taylor, and, and Kamasi. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, f- I forget who else it was. We went to Universal City Walk. And it was like, you know, like our parents, our parents would never question. If we were together, you didn't have nothing. It was like, yeah. Someone's going to be the grown up. We're going to be fine. You know, it's like, where's Ronald? Oh, he's at Kamasi's house. Okay. Right, where right, where right. they at? They're at the Cameron's house. Okay. Whatever. Right, right, right. right. And I remember one day where it was like, you know, uh, 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 it was like, this, but we were still kids. So there's this part where it was like me and my older brother's like, like interaction with our parents was just completely night and day. It was like, I, you know, I was like, I, and I remember it, it was one of these moments where we were like, we went to the movies and we were out late. And so I always knew hey, if you just call them and let them know what you're doing, you won't get in trouble. Yeah. Freedom, was, freedom secure. Yeah, like yeah. Ronald would be like, shoot first, ask questions later. Right. Like, and so we called him back to back. It was the, and I, I, I guarantee you, Kamasi and Cameron, they remember this. We had just got out the movies, and I called my parents and was like, hey, we just got out the movies. Uh, yeah, we're just going to be probably a little late. We're going to get some food or something. Just kind of, you know, let them know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And Ronald was going off. He's like, see, that's not the same thing that happens what I call it. and <laughs> I, like for sheer experimental purposes Ronald he called and then my, my mom was like come home now it didn't matter what <laughs> just come home now and it was just like I'm, but we're in the same it was like we're in the same but it was just kind of one of those we're still kids you know we're still kids because it's like you know you know, you got you're, you're 16, 17 years old it's like no you bring your butt you come home now it was just like I'm standing next to Steven <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> We're in the same place. It was, but it was just like again, kids. We were still kids. How is um, how's it been rocking with the four funksters from California? <laughs> yeah, chili peppers, yeah. man. I mean, I think if you're gonna if you're gonna step into an environment that is stadiums only, and you're gonna get to tour with a band of that caliber, a Chili Peppers, 
um, I reckon that's probably the most dialed in experience because those that guys have lived it all, right? Awesome. So, so, so you, you're not moving in into a stadium. You're moving into a purpose built Chili Peppers oh, lifestyle environment. Oh man, let me tell you something. I kid you not, man. I, I have, I, you know, like seeing again. I, I keep saying this. Yeah. Seeing Flea come out on stage, yeah. and and I've seen all of them, but seeing Flea come out and just whoop ass every night was like, I have no excuses. I have none. This is like full account. This was like, do better. You know, it was like awesome. way better. <laughs> That's you know? awesome. And, and also t- to do it within the framework of songs that draw 80,000 people a night. Like it's oh, one yeah. thing to go out there and whip ass and be a fucking, you know, to, 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 to be a, a, a maestro. It's another thing to be doing it over all around the world. I'm like, man. You know, it's like that's a fucking actual pop song. Man, it just, it, it was inspirational beyond reason. You know, there's a couple of funny moments for sure. You know, like those, I think we were in a, where we had in Florida, where like the whole entire show gets pushed back because yeah. uh, it was like a thunderstorm. So when I usually walk, I, it's like you know when I'm I'm playing, I'm you know showing uh opening up, mm. and so there's a lot of people there. But it was like I had never gotten to see the full, the full you know the full, full Monty. The you know I was like yeah. oh shoot everybody's here, so the show gets pushed back. Yeah, and I I walked out on stage with everybody there, <laughs> and it felt like the Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> I was like. I came out and just belted. I was like, Aah! I was like, oh my God. It was like raining. I was like, you got stadium fever. It's a real thing. And I remember seeing that and going like this, whoa. I was like, what do I do now? Yeah. I was like, where am I? Where am I but what's supposed- funny is when it comes to that situation, when it's fight or flight, dude, you fucking fought. You stood oh. your ground and were like, I'm Thundercat, oh, motherfucker. I, this I, is what I do. I was like, I almost got completely naked and just. <laughs> no, no, it was in. It was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, whoa. But like every day, like getting this again, like because I, I would be out in the, after I play, I'd be out in the audience. Yeah. You know, just out yeah. there screaming the lyrics, you know. Yeah. And. I don't know. It just it was growing in many different directions psychologically for me, for sure. You know, it was like it it, it was like I, it was so much bigger. It, I felt so small, but I also felt so massive. Yeah. You know, it was like whoa. 